Z190 generator installation uh, with our upgraded flywheel with ignition trigger. It's got a longer one on it rather than the standard one. Uh, it comes with a starter clutch ready to go and the larger taper 21mm. Uh, we've got the 100 watt generator and the reg rec in the kit. Tools, we've got circuit pliers, a good Loctite of some sort, we do sell this. Some long nose pliers, a 10mm, an 8mm, it can be socket, ratchet, whatever you like, or spanner. Uh, Phillips screwdriver, flat bladed, uh, electric strap puller, which we sell. Uh, an impact gun of some sort to undo the flywheel nut um, and with a 14mm. And some grease, lithium of some sort. Okay, first off, we're going to pull the bungs out. Reason being we do those first is because it's been held. It's not floating around the bench. So both the timing bungs out. Like so. Under all four eight mil bolts. You've got three of one length and a short one down the front there. So you can just lay them there. Pull the cover off, it can be a bit tight. You just have to be careful not to rip the gasket. So there's the uh, original coils to our uprated coils. There you go, right. So first job we're gonna do is changing the flywheel, get that changed out and then we'll do the coils. So pull the dowels out first just so we don't lose anything. One, they can be a bit rusty. Oh, that's a bit tight. So we've got a bit of rust on there, so we'll deal with that later. Get the gasket out of the way, like so, keep it flat. Go and do the 14 mil nut. This is where you need an impact gun. There we go, get that out of the way. We get our puller. The important thing with a puller is to grease just a fraction on the end of the actual puller nose itself, because this has got a counter bore in it. And if you try and force it up too hard, what it does is it ends up belling out the end of the crank. So you've got to be very careful when you do this. So thread the puller on, like so, till it gets all the way up to the shape. That's it. Wind up the center, just so it touches. Change the socket. So we've got to be careful, we'll do it in a couple of shots. So we go one, back it off, and then again. And it just comes off like that. There's no need to force it into the end of the crankshaft, otherwise it can end up, as I say, bruising the end of that. So, while we're off, put that to one side. We need to undo the 10 mil here, which is a retainer, like so. Put that down there. Next, we'll remove the circlip off the end of the starter drive. We can do it. There we go. Lay that there. Need to take the top rubber out. You can leave the bottom one in. We don't need to disturb that. Just give it a little bit of a pull. Drop the chain over the centre run. And then a second pull, and it's out. Just keep it in the same rotation you take it out. Then you know how it goes back in, because it is actually handed. Well, it's, it can go up either way, but people tend to, I've seen them force them in the other way, which of course it doesn't want to go in. So just keep it in that order. We need our long screwdriver. Prize, we've got to carefully lift the drive gear off like so. Can get a little bit stuck. They've got to come off together equally. They can be a little bit stiff. Like so. That's it, so that's off, keep that in one piece. Check the two Phillips screwdrivers, make sure that they're actually tight. We're using our air tool. <coughs> We've had these come undone. That's it. Uh, we check the eights as well, just in case. Now, we found with the thrust plate in the back here that they're dry from factory. Now, we've had these pick up and skid all the way around with Ali and get stuck to the back of the actual drive gear. As part of the PDI and the service, we some form of smear of lithium grease on there. And even though the starter gear has got it as well, we just give it another dose. Doesn't need too much, I'll 
spread it everywhere, but that'll be fine. Okay, so that's all checked. We can put this back in now, like so. There's no timing marks or anything, it just literally goes on like that. Clear that in, get our circlip on first, like so. That's on, seated nicely. Uh, keep your eye out, if you do drop the gear out or anything like that, the sprocket, the long nose on the drive sprocket goes inwards towards the starter motor. So retainer next. We always grease our bolts. So put the retainer on next. We won't be using an air tool to do this up because it's only a shallow thread and you can end up pulling the thread out. So we'll just do that up lightly. It just wants a nice, just a nip like so. Then we can put our guide back in, making sure we get it the right way. I've got that the wrong way, there you go. That's the right way. You can see the shape of it to the crank case. Nicely done, that's it. So we've got a nice, correct amount of chain tension. Shouldn't be able to just pass that through. It should just, you can see you've got resistance there. So the chain's good. That's all good to go together now. So we're gonna take our new flywheel. You can actually have a look now at the difference of the triggers. If you can see, ours has actually got an exciter on it, whereas the factory, doesn't it doesn't allow the engine to advance at all causing them they run hot they run flat but with this it's a, it's a real transformation right so the new the plastic collar out the new flywheel stops the rollers falling out of bed put that in the old one stop it failing out right find the woodruff key they're really shallow so you've got to be really careful here not to miss the woodruff i've seen people put them on and do it up. Now, a good trick is to shine a torch in there and have a look just to make sure that the woodruff is in fact appearing in the window of the cutout, which that one is. What we tend to do as well is we, we generally fit new nuts, but you just got to clean the Loctite out the nut so that it's not binding up on anything uh, with the old stuff. To change the nut, we're going to add a small drop of Loctite on the thread, like so, just on the very end. And then we get our 14 mil socket, like so. Just gonna get that started. That's it, it's tight, that's 45 newton meters that's set to. So we just need to check that the starter clutch is working. You can see it'll turn anti-clock and then clockwise it will engage the starter motor first stage done okay fitting the coils straightforward enough i'm going to use my little rubber pad so we don't scratch the cover like so uh, we're going to take the coils all out completely everything that's in here so you need your eight mil like so just drop everything in doesn't matter They are locked tighty from factory. You don't really need to do that. It just ends up pulling the threads out eventually if you've got to take it out for any reason. Right, so old coils are out and gone. Chip everything out the cover. Check there's no lumps of muck in there or anything, which is all clean. Take our new coils. That's the back of it. So we need to lower that in, in the right position. So, it wants to point the cable out towards the pulse coil. The pulse coil will hook over to that side. I'll just lay it in first and then you can have a look like that. Find the two bolts to bolt the cover in. Sorry, the coils in. Like so. And we'll whiz those up now. you just got to be sure that you're not going to catch any of the coil wires. Sometimes the windings do come very close, so you just got to watch that. Like so, see that's just very close, but it has cleared. We've had them pinch the wires, so that's good. Stage two, we're gonna pull the rubber grommet up, out of the way first. It's a little bit tough, like so, and then push it down into place roughly where it's gonna go. 
and tweak that afterwards. Make sure you push the little metal tab down so it's away from the flywheel. And then I'm gonna hook the pulse coil in. If I uh, fumble away here a bit, but like so. We've made this little tool to make it easier for us. It's got a magnet in the end. So we can get these started. Number one. Obviously we're trying to do this in good speed. You don't have to be as quick as us. Like so. Right, then we'll do those up so they're finished. Okay, so that's the first stage of the coils and the pulse coil in. Cables pushed down all the way. We've changed the opening now. It's made the opening slightly larger on the later cases. You can just use a little bit of RTV just to seal it in. As you can see, look, it's a slight difference in size. Right, so we'll pull that through. Get the cable retainer. Drop it in. It has actually got a double a little notch there so it locates when you do it up and it stops it turning round so let's just get that in eight mil pinch it up in place like i say you can take your time with this do it up there we go so inside we're just last final pressing down so we know the cable's got a good run it's not in the way of the flywheel the flywheel does sit further up than when the cable is there we go cover on so dowels cleaned up in they go one at a time there we are gasket make sure it's intact nothing stuck to it lay that on check that the neutral grommet is located nicely and there we go that's on happy with that just check the flywheel's got nothing in there stuck. No gremlins, shards of steel. Take your cover with everything installed. I'm gonna literally drop that straight on. Nothing needed more. We've got three of the same length bolts and one short. So short one in the front, the other three in and around. Like so. Do them up. And then the final. We just need to be sure that everything's clearing. Just turn the engine over. There's nothing inside raunchy nor it turns freely, like so. You've just got to put the timing bungs in. Now it's really important, grease these. They end up picking up on the aluminium thread and tearing out at some times. We've had them do it from factory. So we put the top one in. If I can get it started, like so. Just a nice nip. And the same with the main one, like so. Just a nip up. That's it, you've got the bottom end all together. In the next video, we'll try and show you how to wire it into the actual main loom and also the charging circuit.